I am now joined by Matt Pine. Matt is the Senior Vice President and President of Applied Water Systems and America's Commercial Team at Xylem. Welcome, Matt. Thank you. Nice to be with you today. Well, you know, it's really interesting to have you on set for a while with us, Matt, because your Applied Water Systems work really encompasses products and services that deliver comfort and convenience. Yes. Right? They save energy through the efficient movement of water. Uh, as well as brands producing low flow pumps, valves, and membrane filters. And we really appreciate your work with the American, uh, the America's commercial team because you're talking sales and marketing. Mm -hmm. You know, you're talking about applied water, dewatering, transport, and treatment products with integrated solutions in North America and Latin America. And uh, I think everybody out there will recognize a lot of the brands like. Godwin, Flight, and Wedeco, and Sanitaire. Now, you, I know, received an undergraduate uh, degree in marketing at University of Alabama. Yeah. Pretty popular place. It is. And Masters <laughs> of Business from Northeastern University in Boston. Uh, we are so thrilled to have you really here to discuss innovation and even continue the conversation this morning from DEI. Absolutely great. Well, Matt... Have you been to WebTech before? This is my first WebTech. I just joined the Mine water. Mine too. Yeah. So I just joined the water industry about 18 months ago. So, you know, talk about uh, thrust into uh, the industry <laughs> in, the, in the week, the first week of shutdown yeah. for COVID back in March of 2020. Wow. It's um, really, what a vantage point coming out yeah. of that. Yeah, exactly. Trial by fire Trial or by fire. Uh, walking so on water. So I've been in the water industry for 18 months. Now I will preface my first job out of college. Mm -hmm. Uh, for about four years, I was in the water industry, kind of in assessment services, doing okay. inspection of pipelines, helping utilities, um, for example, in Florida, not treat groundwater infiltration. Mm. So I did have a little bit of exposure early in my career, but then I had a large gap, but now I'm back. What brought you back? Um, really Xylem. I mean, it's, okay. it's a great company. Um, it's got great balance. I talk mm -hmm. about the three P's, what people, people, profit, and planet. Nice. People, profit, and planet. planet. And you've got to have a balance, I think, as an organization. And, and Xylem really has that nice balance. And it's nice to know that you can still make a profit by thinking about the planet. Exactly. It, and it's, people. It, yeah, it really is a wonderful trifecta. Yes. Now, with that, you really focus on innovation at Xylem. Mm -hmm. That really affects so many other areas of the industry. And sometimes innovation can seem ruthless. It can seem cold. Uh, but the pavilion here, especially uh, at WefTech, always seems to be full of a lot of laughter and excited people. Uh, what are you hearing as far as the buzz of innovation around the expo floor? I think, you know, look, the buzz is, is loud. I mean, I know mm -hmm. there's not as many people as there normally is here because of the pandemic. But I think the buzz is loud and, you know, coming from other industries over the past couple of decades, I was in HVAC for many years, okay. as well as wind power generation. Mm. A lot of these industries like ours are being disrupted and yeah. innovation is really critical. And, you know, some of the key drivers, I would say, is climate change. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you've got an aging workforce. Yeah. You have a lack of skilled labor, which I think was talked about earlier. And, um, you know, the other thing globally is urbanization and a growing middle class. And all these are kind of putting stress on the system, mm -hmm. no matter if you're in HVAC, wind power, or in water. And so as I kind of walk around, I'm hearing these kind of macro you know, drivers and these themes yeah. played out around the pavilion. It certainly is interesting, too, because innovation knows no borders. Right. It, it's not, it should not be more popular in one area of the globe or of the water sector than another. It right. all crosses in with each other. Right. Well, yeah, I think geographically, you know, you've got obviously in, in Western Europe and the U.S., you've got more of an aging infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And then in the, um, in the emerging markets in West or Eastern Europe, it's more greenfield. It's more startup. It's more yeah. point solutions, more decentralized versus centralized. So, you know, there is a little bit of nuance mm -hmm. as you kind of travel the globe in terms of how you think about solutions. Well, with that thinking about solutions and what's great about WefTech is you're able to really share your challenges and search for solutions together. Uh, what would you say that, or what kind of questions would you encourage people to ask as they roam the expo floor today? I think, look, I think the top of mind thing for me is um, digital and services. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I know there's Digital is a big word and encompasses yeah. a lot of things. And I know there can be a lot of anxiety around digital, especially mm -hmm. when you talk about cybersecurity. Yeah. But some of the biggest pain points of customers that I talk to is around productivity. 
-hmm. And that's something that I, you know, if I was here talking to different vendors, I'd be looking at how can I become more productive because of some of the drivers I talked about yeah. with climate change and mm -hmm. with really an aging workforce and a lack of skilled labor, I've got to be more productive in how I do business. And yeah. digital is a way to really accelerate that um, when you think about innovation. So that's what would probably be top of mind for me. I think the mm -hmm. second thing I would, would, um, would focus on is you don't have to do it alone. Oh, that you know, nice a lot of, a lot of folks, you know, try to take everything in house, um, mm -hmm. kind of this not invented here mentality. <laughs> and heard um, that. yeah, so I think that, you know, thinking about productivity is really important. Thinking about digital and services is, mm -hmm. is the way to go when you're around the show talking to people. Well, and some things that maybe have put people off before, like digital or maybe taking that leap, this is the time to do it. Absolutely. You, you can't just look past it anymore. Right. Um, so Weft Tech as a whole, we've talked about the expo floor. Uh, there's um, unbelievable tech, tech sessions, educational sessions, great, great networking opportunities. How do you feel that conferences like Weft Tech are able to move innovation forward? I think they're paramount because, you know, um, a lot of, it gets people together. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, one of the things that I'm always talking about, and we can get back to DNI about, yeah. you know, collaboration and inclusion. And I think these events really foster that. And that's mm -hmm. important to really drive innovation is having that collaboration, having that inclusion. I think, you know, if you go back a decade, you know, maybe people took more of an individual uh, point of view towards innovation. I mm -hmm. think it's got to be more collaborative. Um, when you think about innovation, you think about design thinking. And I think in events like this, you can get uh, different constituents together to think about how to solve big problems. I really like how you link innovation and DEI together uh, because you're right, it propels innovation and we need that in order yeah. to do it. Um, now let's talk investment process. You've got such a unique vantage point uh, at Xylem. Could you describe the investment process from the what if idea yeah. to getting it marketplace ready? Man, I just had a phone call at 6.30 this morning yeah? on this topic. I mean, yeah, this is exciting it, stuff, it, and we're seeing so it's much the big, It's the biggest challenge because there's not a lack of creative ideas. Mm, okay. It's really around how, how do you take the creative ideas um, to create value? Mm. You have to create value. But it really starts with the customer and really doing good um, immersion with the customer and working customer back. I think that's the most important thing. Interesting, working the customer back. back. I mean, you got to get to the pain points, yeah. you know? Apple does a great job of that, right? Very what true. Are the, what are the pain points of the customer? Work that back and then you get into, you know, the other stuff traditional businesses get into, which mm -hmm. is what is the net present value of the project? What is the internal rate of return? Kind of the yeah. traditional finance mm -hmm. pieces, but it really starts with the customer in lining up those most important opportunities that address their pain points. It's interesting because you mentioned the word traditional. Yes. And and there's so much of the non-traditional that is the disruptor and really making innovation happen. Mm -hmm. well, what do you think about that 6.30 call this morning? It was early. <laughs> <laughs> it was a disruptor to my sleep. <laughs> I'm sure it was. Um, but what's the key, I mean, for you to really in spotting like the next big idea? Is there something that you look for intentionally yeah. that if you see it come up within a project that's being discussed or, or a new idea that you're like, okay, they yeah. might be on something. Maybe it's their, their vantage point and how they're thinking of it or an actual solution they're creating within it. How, how do you spot that? Yeah, I mean, look, uh, you know, I don't, I don't think that's a perfect science, but you have a mm -hmm. set of criteria. I think the one that I just talked about not to be redundant is really it's got to be customer back and it's got to solve a customer pain point. Yeah. If it doesn't do that, then you can take it off the list. So mm -hmm. starting with, you know, the customer pain point, are we solving something that's important to them that's going to create value for really the value chain for them and for us to be able to put those investment dollars in? Because look, mm -hmm. you know, we're a publicly traded company. Right. And, um, you know, shareholders want us to maximize, you know, our earnings. Mm -hmm. And we want to do that in a very um, strategic and, and thoughtful way but it's always got to be rooted in the customer and what are their pain points and problems. That that says a lot with how you do what you do because you do have shareholders involved. Yeah. But when you keep it to the customer yeah. and really look to them, it's hard you can to be lose. successful. Then it becomes That's, really about execution. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, well in execution, what are your, your biggest tips on how to execute properly? Well, I mean- Because a lot of it can yeah. fall apart at that yeah, point. Yeah, absolutely. Not to get um, too much in the weeds, but from my experience, you've got to have a project leader mm -hmm. because a lot of times execution breaks down because you have someone in a project 
engineering, marketing, yeah. um, operations, who's trying to lead the project and lead their function. And it, they get, oh. um, you know, it just becomes too hard on them or they're not, they're not um, educated to run a program. So I think having good program management mm -hmm. is the key to good execution. And it's holding all the people that are part of the program accountable and then driving that and closing, you know, issues as they come up. Yeah, and in program management, you can be working on something from what, a couple of months to a couple of years. Yeah, absolutely. We have projects that are, you know, that's a good point I'll, I'll talk about. Yeah. We have projects that are three months or, or some that are like two and a half, three years. Mm -hmm. And um, in today's world, you've got to have what I call a dual track. Okay. You've got to have kind of a traditional uh program management that can deal with complex programs that will mm -hmm. take that long. But a lot of programs today can be driven by what we call agile, which okay. is minimal, minimal viable products, getting products out and iterating. Now, the nuance with that is you are going to fail some. <laughs> and I think with innovation, and especially as this industry, like a lot of industries, are moving from what I call analog to digital, mm -hmm. we're going to fail. And people have to get comfortable with failure. And I think that's probably one of the biggest barriers. Yes for a lot of people making this leap into digital is because they're afraid of failing. And so we've really got to, you know, get that, um, mm -hmm. that culture shifted both in our company as well as our, at our customers. Do you do that within your company, creating that culture, uh, just with, with pushing the employees to, to really look at this with the agility that, yeah. you know, some things are going to change as innovation creeps up or we have something else to, to, to introduce. Do they feel empowered to go ahead and say, I think we should change it up. That's the that's my job. Mm -hmm. I it's, mean, my, my job is to help shift our culture so we can execute strategy. Mm -hmm. and, and culture it, matters. Yeah, and it, it does. And it's and uh, you know we talked about D and I earlier, but mm -hmm. that's a piece of it. But really aligning the talent um, and the culture around what you're trying to execute is really critical. And that's what I spend a lot of my time on. That's 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 really super. And it's nice to see Xylem really putting that focus on what you do for them. Uh, as you've been through the expo, and, and it is just buzzing around here, it's so exciting, uh, what are you seeing that you think maybe the next best thing or a couple of the next best things that you're going to remember long after WEF Tech 2021 closes its doors? Yeah, well, look, I haven't had a ton of, a ton of time to yeah. walk around that much to probably give you a, an answer, but I can tell you from a Xylem perspective, yeah. What, yeah. I, what I'm excited about is we have two new product launches. We have a, a product called Duron. 8 plus which is a uv disinfection system and it's got some great uh value propositions for our customers duron 8 plus yeah duron 8 plus cool. it's a uv uh, disinfection system and then we have another product with leopold our brand leopold mm. called texler which is a clarifier in the water treatment process so we're really excited about those two la new launches mm -hmm. and you can go by our booth and take a look but they're really innovative and create a lot of value for customers that's fantastic do you have to know the number of the xylem booth? i think it's 1808 i know it's in the 1800 so check out the xylem booth for for both of those and and really i mean that really defines innovation and and kind of speaking of innovation we've said that word i don't know 30 times yeah. now uh the word is used a lot um, but really, what does it mean to you, Matt? And really, what does true innovation mean to you? Yeah, I think it gets back to the point I made earlier about, you know, innovation in the past, I think was more, not that it wasn't team-based, but it was more individual-based within mm -hmm. teams. I think it's now, to me, innovations around this notion of collaboration and inclusion um, yeah. and this notion of design thinking where mm -hmm. you're uh, being agile, you're moving fast, you're, you're putting out uh, what we call minimum viable products. They're okay. not like perfect. Mm -hmm. You know, don't let great be the enemy of good. Oh, you're getting out. I, wait, don't let great, great be the enemy of be good. The enemy yeah, of good. so we're getting yeah. stuff out in a rapid fashion. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think that's a nuance and a change as I think about innovation. Um, and I think the last thing I would say is it's, it's innovation's got to be somewhat disruptive, mm -hmm. whether it's new technology or whether you're disrupting an existing technology you have to make it better, but it's always got to be rooted in uh, creating value for the customer and yep. with a customer lens coming back. You know, I kind of say, you know, down and out versus up and in, you know, mm -hmm. we got to mm -hmm. be focused out towards the customer versus inward in ourselves. And I think if you do that, then you'll be pretty successful. Well, that's cool. I, I, you referenced before value chain. Yeah. Like you really see the value yeah. at all the different links that can, right. you know, that makes it stronger as a that's whole. That's right. You know, you've also seen a lot of, of innovation. And, and I really just wanted to ask you, what do you think the state of innovation is within the water sector, you know, right now in 2021, you know, compared to 10 years ago? Is it is it steady? Is it 
improving? Is it is it starting to fall behind? Yeah, I would say it's again like like other industries, it's accelerating okay. um, because of the trends that I talked about earlier around climate change, mm -hmm. around you know the workforce, uh, some of the global trends around urbanization, right? Yeah. Um, and the growing middle class. There's a bigger demand on water. There's less supply and less you know less budget mm -hmm. for it. Um, so I would say absolutely the trends are, are, are favoring an acceleration of innovation in, in this sector as well as many other adjacencies. Now, even with that acceleration of innovation, what kind of barriers do you see put towards innovation in the water sector that we need to address so that we can yeah. lower those, those barriers? Yeah, I think it goes back to what I said. I think a fear of failure mm -hmm. um, is a big barrier. Um, we've got to be open-minded and we've got to we got to move with speed. I think that's probably the biggest thing is the barriers were, were a very slow industry to adopt. And we've okay. got to, we've got to change our headset mm -hmm. and be geared up with talent, people and structure to be able to move faster. Well, and it goes back to your PPP yeah. and that was people, profit, profit and, planning. and planning. And if you really focus on people, profit and planning, you can have the speed of innovation at your back. That's right. What are you uh, most excited to take back from WefTech? For the colleagues that well, hey, are I'm here. Hey, I'm most excited because I got to meet a lot of my colleagues in th third dimension today. Because I've been <laughs> for the first time. I've been locked in a in a remote office here for 18 months. I've just really started getting out the past three or four months, uh, meeting my colleagues um, really around mm -hmm. the U.S. I haven't been able to travel globally quite yet. Yep. I'm planning some trips in December, but um, for me, it's getting out and spending time with our people because they're, they're our most important resources and asset and. It's great to spend time with them. Well, I often say everybody in water serves on the front lines. And for the first time in a while, everybody's in front of each other. And there really is no substitute for that face-to-face. -face. And, and, and really hats off to WEF and McCormick Place Chicago uh, to create, we, we either are fully vaccinated or everybody's been tested within the last 24 to 48 hours for a negative COVID test. Uh, and here in Chicago, if we're not in this booth distance, everybody is masked uh, for city regulations. So yeah. trying to do that in a safe and effective way as well. Yeah. Well, I got to tell you, Matt, is there anything else you'd like to add? Because Xylem really is in so many different sectors. And, and is there something you're really super excited about, whether it's what you're launching mm -hmm. or something that maybe we'll see <laughs> in a few months or I'm next year I'm at excited. the show? I'm excited about everything. I <laughs> Um, Spoken like a true uh, exactly. marketer and that, as well. And yeah, and that's, uh, that's the challenge is trying to come down the funnel on what you can really focus mm -hmm. on because there is so many great ideas that we have at Xylem. We have a lot of great people that mm -hmm. think about a lot of great things. And that, that's probably the biggest challenge is what are yeah. we going to focus on? And mm -hmm. I think that's the, the challenge for a lot of people listening is how do we stay focused? And um, that's what I spend time on, aligning the culture and the talent to be go, get after yeah. those two or three things that you can do in a year to be successful. And that's what I'm focused on. Well, Matt, I think we can all feel really good about Xylem and its prospects going ahead. You certainly define success in a matter of collaboration, yeah. going back to the root of the customer, really taking that value chain into, into conversation no matter what you're innovating at the time. And I just want to ask you one last question. You hear this word disruption a lot. Right. Uh, where do you think disrupt, what kind of role does disruption play in innovation? Well, is everything it, that's innovative disruptive? Yeah, I think, look, I mean, people, that word scares people. Um, mm -hmm. It does. It, uh, look, I think a lot of innovations come out of disruption. I mean, I was just thinking about this this morning, actually last night when I flew in, you know, think about Uber. And I was thinking mm -hmm. about the taxi line. I mean, they, that industry got disrupted. Yeah. There's, you know, taxis parked along the streets of Brooklyn mm -hmm. because in Manhattan, they're, they don't need them anymore. And so, yeah, I mean, a lot of, a lot of innovation comes out of disruption and that's kind of... Um, the culture that we've created, um, yeah. you know, in, uh, in the world that we live in. Well, I'm really happy that you're doing what you are in the world Thank that you. we all live in. Thank you to you, Matt. Thank you to Xylem.